hear me? Can you see me? I can. Can you hear and see me? Yes, I can. Wonderful. Hi. Okay. <laughs> is, this, uh, is it just you and me today? Oh, uh, no. I think the other girl should be joining, I believe. Okay. There should be more of them coming. I think that's right. Are there more beaches coming? There's <laughs> But um, that was a bad joke. No, it was a good joke. <laughs> that, that's the type of joke that writes itself, right? But how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. It's finally a little bit of overcast up here where I am. So I'm kind of grateful for that. I like the sun, but like, I like the rain and the chill too. So There is something really cool about like that, that cold rain. I'm into it. I love it. I love it makes it. you feel happier. It does. It does. I'm I'm looking forward to this weekend too. I'm up at my boyfriend's place and get to spend some time with my puppy. So I'm pumped about that. That's your boyfriend's place. Yeah. <laughs> what? That is so. I love that place. It's very. That's it's, like what have, heaven. What heaven? It, it's uh. It's definitely like uh. That masculine ski resort. Like smells like a old den in here or something <laughs> yeah yeah this is like aspen meets my soul kind of. <laughs> i yeah. like it i like it wow and then you're with well, your puppy i am with my puppy he he's hiding somewhere he he had he was a little sick earlier today and he hid his puke in the guest bedroom which is always a classic dog thing to do but um, yeah he's okay I love your lipstick. It's oh, gorgeous. thank you, Rihanna. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I forget which one. I think it's one of the boys. I just love a good lilac. It's like vibrant enough to be like, boom. I love it. It's, it's such a, it's so nice on your skin tone too. It's really beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hello? Sorry. Oh. Hey. Sorry about that. Bye. No, it's fair. Hi, how are you? Oh my god, I love the sweater. Oh, thank you. Rolling Stones oh. inspired? Yeah. Yes, it is. Nice, nice, nice. Good to be comfy. Yeah, I think we're we're waiting for like one. Oh, right. Okay. My dog is. He heard me. my dog. I think. Yeah, they like <laughs> activated each other. <laughs> Because your dog, he's he may be sick, but he's still running amok, which means good. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, so okay, we have all right. I think this is everybody now. We're just waiting for Eliza, but she okay. Let on. me go grab my dog for one minute, and then. <laughs> Hi, sweets. Hi, girl. Sorry about the uh, last day, guys. Day. That's okay. No problem. Okay. Oh, I my cat have to, is here. Sorry. Yeah, we might have to. I might have to hold my dog. To, okay, there, there's a cat. <laughs> he does that a lot. Like, be prepared. That's gonna happen a lot. I love so. it. I love it. This. I mean, my, my dog like sees me. Dogs don't understand that now we work through Zoom, so they're kind of like, "Why don't you cuddle? You're there. You're sitting. You're yeah. in the right position." <sighs> but how yeah. are you guys? How was it creating? I guess you get that a lot now. Like, what was it like creating during this pandemic? We're finally getting out. Are you are you feeling revitalized? That's a great question. I, I think there were definitely some highs and lows. And I think, like, we're all looking forward to the light at the end of the tunnel with people getting vaccinated and hoping to get back to live shows soon. Um but yeah, I think like there were just different periods for all of us individually. Personally, I'm just like the release of this um, EP has kind of helped get me amped up and get me excited and inspired again to get, you know, playing and get out there. And yeah, it's a really good EP. And it felt like, did you make it during the pandemic? Or I know a lot of artists that they just released their old stuff. Yeah, we 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 were sort of had this um, this EP on the back burner for about a year and a half. We recorded it around the same time as our last EP, um, but we still have been um, using this time to write new music, and we have like about a full album's worth of songs ready to be um, worked on in the studio. 
So we we work we we did use this time to to be creative and because it was sort of all that we could do, right? Yeah. When you um when you don't when so much of your job is um not obsolete but you're not able to do it, you have to find other ways to function and to be creative and to um still, you know, do your job in whatever way you can. And so for that, it was for us anyway, it was writing music. Yeah. I mean, I think so many people, I can't tell you how many people are like, I'm going to learn a language. I'm going to learn guitar. And like, <laughs> like people were amped. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I set a lot of those goals for myself and I did. None of none. I'm lazier than I've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> I learned some stuff though. I, learned I, some I did some stuff, but I don't know. Yeah, but like 6 a.m. to work out, Leandra. Oh, yeah, come on. Uh, I'm a workout buff now. <laughs> nap afterwards, but like still. You're like yeah. Ian Michaels now, you know? Just a bit. You're you're so strong now. You could be a fitness guru. I learned how to make ricotta. That's one thing I did not know before. All right. So pasta so at your house. Fun you little thing. Ricotta everything. Ah, I get it. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. I mean, I, I started playing piano, which was really cool. I got more into my music production. I wanted to really solidify my French, but like after one week, I was just like, au revoir. <laughs> language thing is hard though because you need to be able to speak to people to to be better at your to be to get the languages. So when people were like, I'm going to learn how to speak a language by myself. Like it, it, that doesn't make sense to me. But I, uh, I applaud people that tried. My yes. French is terrible. Like I, I would love to be better at French. Well, I, I applaud everybody who thought they were going to do something and then realized they weren't. Um, <laughs> but like w- with with future lovers, it's interesting because you have this in the back burner, and then you're starting to make even like new music. So how do you feel this EP kind of encapsulates? either who you who you were in the moment compared to what you're seeing from your new music um it's funny like I found like the new music that um we've just written is a lot more nostalgic and a lot more um introspective than maybe future future lovers to me is very much about living in the moment and existing for like who you are at that moment it's very like um you know with whether it's blow up or the professional or slow-mo it's very much like in your face like this is who I am and fuck you if you don't like it like I want to go out and party and have fun whereas like maybe some of our new our new music um because of you know the year that we've had is a lot more thoughtful and a lot there's a bit more of like a longingness to return to normalcy but not just for yourself but for like everybody you know, there's there's a couple of songs on there about missing seeing your friends in the summer and uh, <laughs> strangely enough, missing tour for us, <laughs> but also <laughs> missing hating being on tour, if that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, th- th- that totally makes sense. I imagine like I, I think Eliza was saying it or or Lee Dog, like this was your laziest year. And I imagine that. I, I put your. I said your, your Zoom name, Lita. I freaking love, <laughs> love that. it. Love it's love amazing. It. Dream Lita. come true. <laughs> like we're already besties. You're using our bestie <laughs> names. <laughs> I was like, yo, what's up? <laughs> um, but I, I feel like for a lot of people, there's this weird kind of. I can't wait to go back to life, but I also can. I, yeah. I, 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 I like. We're starting to go out more, and there's. You realize people are energy, and there's something exciting and draining about it all at once how much you can and can't handle things and I I imagine that's what you're going through right now and and starting to amp things up a little bit of like huh like I don't want to do that or or I actually want to do that or boundaries and 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 risk yes absolutely yeah no that's interesting that you talk about that because it's something that I've totally noticed like through the through the last year because you we have been doing this for, I'd say, like, what, 12, 12 years um, or something like that, 13 maybe. And it's just been go, 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 go for so long. And we haven't had that, like, kind of down time for an extended period like we did over this pandemic. And, um, yeah, I think a lot of us were introspective and definitely realized, like, that what you say about people or energy, like, I totally feel that a lot. Um, but, yeah. But it's good to, like, you build up practices to – go back into normal life when it's going to happen and 
I think everyone like benefited from that in some way or another, you know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. And I, I find it very interesting how you said like your next album was going to be nostalgic where I think this one lives in like a, a present future kind yeah. of like, I'm so great that anything that comes to me is great. Whereas your next one is like, I, I miss, I miss the past. Yes. <laughs> does, does that kind of, that transition is 100% the pandemic, but would you say that that transition of also, do you feel humbler as a, as persons? Like, do you feel like you have, have kind of grown even more? I think that there's sort of a, like, what's it called? Is it a pendulum? Is that the word? Yeah. There's some, I think that there's sort of a pendulum with, um, with us in particular, but for many artists that, um, it, it makes a lot of sense for a certain album or a certain piece of work to feel very like nostalgic and thoughtful and for another one to feel like completely the opposite. I think with us, if you look back at our past works, like um, that's sort of what happens with us. So it, it makes sense that you sort of spend so much time thinking about the past that your next work is sort of a um, uh, <laughs> reaction to that that you're much more about like living in the moment and being very present and, and thinking about what's going to come next. Mm. And then after going through that, you're much more likely to go back to thinking about the past or whatever. I don't know. Does that make any sense? <laughs> no, it's like, it's like you're, what you're saying. It's like a pendulum swing. If you do one album about being present, the next one will be about the past. And then the one after will be about being present. It's like yes. back and forth because yes. people are back and forth. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And your music very much reflects you. So I'm curious, you know, future lovers, what about how you love and how you want to be loved? Do you feel this music reflects? Mm -hmm. A great question. Question. <laughs> wow. This is a very relevant question. I mean, uh, are you talking about like any kind of love, like platonic love, love between like you and your fans, like love for mankind or like, more like romantic love because like I, I look at it as relationships but you can pick the relationship oh. whichever one you feel is like more present in your mind well it's funny I mean um when we picked future lovers like I think it was Adam Leanne just selected it and it um it's bizarre. like we're all um we're all now in relationships which we haven't really been in in a, a place I think that's also partially like COVID when a lot of people are now like who who have been single for a really long time are now in relationships. Um, it's it's difficult to figure out how you want to be loved in the future. I guess, especially for us, because now that we're all in relationships, um, only really Eliza and I have sort of experienced the um, what it's like to be in a relationship and be on the road. You know, I think it'll be maybe I'm maybe speaking for you and Leandra, oh, Kylie, a little bit about maybe your thoughts school, about that? We first started, but that right. was a long time ago. Hey, I had crushes I had to leave, okay? That was hard. <laughs> it, was, it was big. <laughs> they didn't know, but I was heartbroken. <laughs> it's the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. I guess, yeah. like, um, a mutual understanding and compassion uh, is sort of what, comes to mind for me when you think about how you want to be loved like because we're probably not going to be like living with our partners day to day as we have been during COVID like we're going to be on the road a bit more and uh you want a partner that isn't going to resent you for that or make you feel like you know like you're leaving them behind you want somebody that wants you to you know totally succeed and be completely there for you even if that means being away from them I guess. Yeah. That seems to mind for me what I would like. <laughs> no, I mean, those are good requirements. Compassion. We love that. We love compassion. But I, 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 it kind of feels like what you're saying is you don't know what you want until you get it. Kind of. Like, you don't, for me, it's like you don't know what you want until you know what you don't want. <laughs> okay. I feel that. I feel that. Isn't that strange how things work? I feel like, and I guess I could hear that in a little bit in your lyrics in terms of sometimes it feels like you're pushing back lyrically against people, their ways, the things that they, they do. Like it's like a, a your every lyric is making a boundary. And I find that curious because 
sometimes I wonder who I am when I'm not, what, who, how, I, how do I define myself by not defining myself according to how others define me? If that makes any sense. Yeah, I get what you're trying to say. I get what you're trying to like say. Like if somebody says mean, that I'm mean, I say, no, I'm not mean. But then am I kind? Yeah. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like you're always saying no to, to p- how people define you. But who are you despite that? Yeah. Yeah. I got really okay. deep. I was like processing, <laughs> processing. Yeah. I saw yeah. a lot of processing of thoughts. It's not even noon yet. <laughs> this is pretty meta shit we're talking about. Yeah, this is pretty. But, <laughs> but like I, I'm in stuff. <laughs> I mean, but I definitely felt like that with the, with your your verses, and I think that's what what attracts people so much. It's kind of like we all live in that pushback. And then comes that moment of who am I when I'm not pushing back? Yeah, it's it's bizarre. Like a lot of people say, a lot of people tell me that they really understand who I am from my lyrics and that I really write it all out. And it's weird because, I mean, I don't know if I'm even consciously thinking about like this, like when I'm writing, it's not really therapy to me. It's more like I, I, I'm not thinking about anything at all. I'm just being directly honest with like, whatever the subject is in the song, whether it's like um, missing partying or um, our autobiographical song or, you know, missing my partner on while we're on the road or um, with you don't owe me anything, um, not wanting to be in a relationship with a particular person. Um, I just try to be as honest with the subject matter um, as I can be. So I guess that's how a lot of people do sort of, get to know me is because I'm just very honest with yeah yeah I think there's also another like like point to make because you write in such a specific style you write about like personal experiences and they usually follow a trend of like like just kind of like the bad behavior song like going out that one it kind of epitomizes how you write and that's one side of you but there are so many other sides of you that kind of aren't on display to to the fans that they don't know about you so it's like they do perceive you in this one way and that is like part of who you are, but there are also a lot of different like versions of Jordan. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's definitely a lot of different versions of, of everybody, but do, who do you feel the beaches is when it comes to a version of you? Mm. Oh, these are really hard questions. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. no do really you great. like bunnies? Uh, <laughs> we're going to lighten I'm it up. Do you like bunnies? bunnies? um i mean we're definitely party girls but we're deeper than that (laughs) yeah i think the beach is is not necessarily like who we are as individuals but it is who we are together the beach is to me is like Mm. our relationship and that it's it's so strong and unifying and i think that's where, where a lot of people get inspiration from is like that a lot of people and i would agree with us see us as girls that like really don't care about what other people think about us. We're like really well at the end of the day, just four girls that like to play music and have fun and like, you know, get dressed up as the A&E team and run around on like a ferry, like, or um, <laughs> just do a lot of um, stuff that, and we don't really care about like how people perceive us for that. And that's really because we have such a strong foundation, like not only as like mutual musicians that respect each other, but also as, really really strong friends and it's in that foundation like it's in that relationship that I think that is the beaches like it's not just one or one of us or how we fit as parts but it's like the binds between us that to me epitomize who we are as the beaches Ooh, I love that response because I honestly it's the first time that I've ever interviewed a band where they kind of said their band is about their relationship with each other I've never heard that answer before and and it kind of explains why so many would be attracted to you because you're not I think a lot of people do individual music and about their relationships but it it always goes back to them but for you guys it goes back to all of you and I think that that's what people want they they want their clique they want their group they want their A&E team yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. I think there's just a certain authenticity to having that genuine like friendship and genuine connection 
And then it also comes across when you write and also when you perform. And I think that there's a, that's like what you, what you just said, like people are kind of attracted to that because it's authenticity and people crave that. I think we're lacking that in, in today's uh, pop culture. It's real power too. It's power. Yeah. yeah. But I, 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 I want to add, it's, it's not just like authentic and power. It's fun. Like I've seen you guys perform and, and you're like, Woo, it's a force, but it's so joyous. And I think that sometimes we think power is like really serious. No. I'm just going to walk into a room like this. But you, I mean, you're having a blast and you feel untouchable. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's, it's also fun. But I, yeah, I, to me, the two are like mutually same ballpark. Yeah. 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 I, I was going to say, like, we're wrapping up the interview and I've been doing a segment called like Moonology, where I pull out Moonology cards for anybody who wants. Would you like to do that? Yes, sure. please. Yes. Yeah. OK, but I'll do it as a band because there's like we're, we're wrapping up. You only have a few minutes. But here, let's see what the moon cards say for the beaches. People love this segment. So I was like, maybe I should start doing it. I'm pretty good. Uh, I only picked three, so don't worry about it. (laughs) (laughs) The beaches. Ooh, interesting. A fiery climax approaches. Surrender to the... Wow, you got like really... So nothing is yet set in stone. A fiery climax approaches and surrender to the divine. So you got like three transition cards, which means like something... I feel like something huge is coming for your career. Yeah, I don't know if like Sean Mendes. What? What? <laughs> something big is happening, like Sean Mendes. <laughs> I well, it, it feels like from what the cards say, surrender to the vine, a, a fiery climax. Luck is on your side. Let me to elaborate. The 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 answers you need are coming, and hold to your vision. So whatever is coming for you. As a band, as a group, you have luck on your side. And if you keep your vision, you'll be able to make the transition beneficial. But like, there's like a a, a boom coming your way. I like this. This this feels good. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I've never seen people, uh, somebody pull three transition cards all all at once. Nothing is yet set in stone, a fiery climax and surrender to the divine. And when I asked, you know, you pick three more, it seems like luck and luck and holding together how you see yourself will help you. And luck, you know, luck I gotta just write comes. These, I got to write these down because my girlfriend will be very interested. What were they called again? Oh, <laughs> um, Method. Moonology cards. But what, which ones did you pull? They were like the fi- little fiery Oh, climax. you got a fiery <laughs> climax, surrender to the divine, nothing is yet set in stone. And you've got luck is on your side. Um answers you need are coming and hold your vision all feels very positive which is good yeah yeah yeah. i mean it it feels like uh, the thing i love about these cards is that they they're all about releasing the negativity and they don't tell you they they go straight for your situation without telling the person who's pulling in a way you know it's just about hold on to your vision and luck is on your side. I think that's good. And it seems like, I mean, future lovers is pretty awesome. And if your EP is something that is about, well, your next album is about um, how you've developed as persons and you guys are pretty great. You're pretty fun. You're pretty awesome. Powerful. I'm excited because powerful people looking back on their lives. Who doesn't want to read that? Who doesn't want to hear that? It's like an audio, it's like a biography and sound. 